Hey, what's up everybody? It's David Draftbit and we've just released a big update to our Blocks feature that I'm really excited to show you. So if you're not familiar with Blocks, um, Blocks are groups of saved components that you can reuse throughout your app. And before now you could create Blocks from existing components on a screen and then add those Blocks to other screens. And this was helpful for duplicating parts of your UI but it did have some limitations. So for example, you couldn't update a block after it was created and using them was essentially like copy pasting the blocks components. So anytime you wanted to make a change to shared component uh, or shared group of components, you'd have to make it that same change anywhere you're using that group of components, um, which was, you know, obviously tedious and repetitive. So, um, now blocks are way more powerful, so let me show you what I mean. Um, I've got a screen here with a list of properties, and this screen has a card here that represents the properties. So you can see I've got a group of components here labeled card for each of these. And then I have another screen, properties, with a different list of properties, but uh, this screen also uses the same group of card components. So this, um, if I wanted to update this card, for instance, and maybe like add some more data here to the bottom of the card, if I did that here, um, I would also have to replicate that same thing on this screen here and in a larger app where I'm possibly using this card in on many different screens, I'd have to update it everywhere. Uh, and so the new blocks takes care of that though. With the new blocks, you'll have one block that basically your source of truth. And then whenever you make a change to that block, all the instances of that block will also be updated throughout your app. So let me show you what I mean. I've got this group here. And if I click on the overflow menu, I have an option to save custom blocks. So I'm gonna save this custom block. I'm gonna give it a name. And you have the option of opening the block right away. I'm gonna close that for a minute so I can show you. We've added a, a switcher up here above the left panel. So right now we're in screens mode and this is our list of screens and these are the components on the selected screen. But if I switch now over to blocks, you can see I now have a, a separate list of blocks for my app. And if I click on this block, it will switch in to the block editor mode. And you can see the component tree is updated now to just show me what's contained within this block. Okay, so you can see our card is empty now. And that's because we're not passing any data into the card yet. But if we switch back to here, you can see in my background image, I'm pulling in an image from the list data and I've got a text here with the price and then another one with name and description. So when you create a block, um, Draftbit does its best effort to interpret how you're using data within those different components that compromise or comprise the block and then it will add those properties as block properties to the block that you've created. So you can see here with my block selected in the as the top level in the component tree, if I come over and click on the data tab, this third tab here, you can see I've got description, image, name, and price, and I can add a, um, some test values here. So I'll just add some test values here real quick. And you should see on the left, it will start updating And then let me grab, I've got an image I can grab here. I'll paste that in here. And so now you can see we have a better preview of what our component looks like. And you'll notice this great background here. So when you're in draft view with a block, above the middle preview, there's a switcher here that you can switch between light, dark, and transparent background. So depending on your app style, you can um, 
change that so while you're previewing when you're in any of the actual preview modes it will use your normal background color so you can see here now we've got a block and we've got some test data and some block properties and now if I switch back to my screens and go to my home the same way that we were passing data into all these separate components like the image and these text components you can do the same thing with a block so I'm going to hide this click on the parent container and then I'm going to open the component tree and under the block section here we can just add our new block and now you can see we've got a bunch of instances of our default block and they all look the same because we haven't updated our data we're not passing any data into it yet if we select our block though, again in the data tab over here, the third tab, now we can reselect these values. So I can select my description and my image name and price. Okay, so you can see now each of these have been updated and they're all displaying the unique data for each item in that list. Um, okay, so now we've got one updated and we're going to do the same thing to our properties. So I'm going to hide that again, do the same exact thing here, grab my block, add it here into the list, and then I'm going to select that data one more time. Okay, so we're basically back where we were. And I can go ahead and get rid of these. So now we've got one block here, property block, that represents a bunch of different components. And then on our screens, we're using instances of that component. And they're basically mirrors of the block. So anytime that we now change this block all the instances on those screens are going to change and i can show you here simply by we can change the color of this little label up here if i wanted to update that to our secondary color you can see it's updated here i'll switch to preview and then coming back to our screens you can see now on both screens that labels color has updated and we didn't have to do anything else. We didn't have to go through each screen and change each prop individually or anything like that. So we've got a single source of truth now, which is awesome. And it, the same thing uh, for if we wanted to add more data here, if we wanted to add a, another line under here with max guests or number of rooms or anything like that, we could do that. Anytime you're passing data, you'll need to update your block properties over here. So if we did decide to do max guests, we could just add it here. Max guests. And then now that's available to us to use within here. So any anytime you create a block prop, it's going to be available for any of the components inside the block, just like if you were passing data into these components from a screen like before. Okay, so one other cool thing we can do is we can actually create blocks from blocks and we can put blocks inside of blocks. So for instance, I've got a top and bottom section here for my card and I can actually convert these to blocks. And I'll do the same for the bottom. And I can switch over to my bottom here and you can see since um, it knows that you had data, it's already got these block props set, the description and the name that were used previously. And since we already had default value, it also carries that over. And then the same thing with the property top here, which is just the image. 
So if we wanted to, we could actually get rid of these as well. And we can add our cards here, in, or our blocks here instead. We can add the card top and card bottom. And then again, we're going to want to come here and make sure we pass in that data. And that'll update the property card top. And then we can come and do the same thing for the bottom description. Cool, okay. So now we've got so, uh, basically a parent component and child, uh, a parent block and child blocks. And if we come back over to our home screen here, you can see everything is still the same. And so now we've got even more um, control over these things. And this is not only nice for things like you know, composite components like a card or whatever, but also more atomic components. Like if you have a custom button, especially something like a custom button where you might use it on every page or every screen of your app, or if you have a custom um, navigation or something, then, you know, you can have one block that represents that navigation and then use that block on every screen and, you know, making sure that you don't have to repeat yourself. We can also create blocks just from a blank state, just like a screen. Here in the block list, we've got a plus button, and you can just click that and create some new component. And it'll just be an empty state here ready for you to build out, and you can use those exactly the same as any of the other ones that you start with, um, with an existing group of components like we already saw. And then, of course, you can duplicate any of your blocks. And of course, you can delete your blocks as long as they're not in use. If you have a block that has instances of it on other screens, then you're gonna need to delete those instances before you delete the block. So there's also a history here, just like um, with screens, you've got a history. So if you do delete a block, you're able to undelete it, which is nice. Um, let's see what else. Also the same thing here for deleted components in the tree. If you delete something and you need it back, you can find them. You can see here our bottom and top from previously that we deleted. If we needed to bring those back, we can. And so, yeah, that's, that is the new blocks and draft bit. And uh, we hope you love it. Let us know what you think and happy building.